Thank you for joining me for this week in review. We're going to have a special focus this episode dealing with Joe Biden. And I want to speak to you on the theme of Joe Biden and Simon the Sorcerer share similarities. Now, this is drawn from Acts chapter 8. And I'm going to read some portion of scripture to begin here because the focus is on Joe Biden at this time. And if you're unfamiliar with sorcery or a sorcerer, you're dealing with somebody that uses powers uh, for self-exaltation, uh, power grabbing, and misleading, manipulating, and misrepresenting things to accomplish his personal goals. I want you to read with me Acts 8. Now, we're going to break in. This is the early church. A church was planted in Samaria. My middle name is Larry Philip Tomzak. Philip went down there as an evangelist, and boy, he preached the gospel. There were signs and wonders, exorcisms. Uh, there was joy in the city at what was going on. But then we read something, and I want to put this on the screen. Follow with me. In Acts 8, it tells us this. It says that now a man named Simon was previously in the city practicing sorcery and astonishing the nation of Samaria, saying he was someone great, to whom they all, listen to that, they all listened from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. They listened to him because for a long time he had what? He had astonished them by his sorceries. But when they believed Philip's preaching about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Even Simon himself believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed as he watched the miracles and signs which were done. Skip down with me a few verses to 18 where it tells us, When Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power with whomever I lay hands on, that they may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could purchase the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor share in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Therefore repent of your wickedness and ask God if perhaps the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. Well, you know what? He was so scared by that that you know what he did? Is he said, Peter, pray for me. It, it was amazing in the Greek there. It says, uh, actually, Peter said, "May to hell, yeah, to hell with you and your money. This was a very serious thing, but this man was very consumed with self with self, his power, gaining status. And when today, when I look at Mr. Biden, while I pray for the man every day, I'm very concerned. I see a man that's been changed. He's not the same man that he was when he started his political career. Joe Lieberman, who was a senator with him, he said he's, he's diminished, and he is. I saw a documentary just a week ago on him, the real Joe Biden, and you saw this man, and he was humble. He was a moderate. He was pro-life. He was pro-traditional marriage. He was uh, uh, strong on crime. But people say today, what's happened to him? It's, it's like he's a different man. He's changed. Well, I think the gig is up. And I think he's at a defining moment. It's kind of like Belshazzar in Daniel 5. Do you remember when Daniel uh, came in to interpret the dream? And he said, your days are numbered. Your kingdom is at an end. You've been found wanting. Really. And I believe that's really a place where Mr. Biden is approaching as he's almost 79 in November. Now, let's take a look at this if we can, because I think it's a very serious time. I believe God is resisting this man. God does... He does resist the proud, the Bible says. And I'm going to read to you um, something. I took some notes as I watched uh, Chuck Todd. You know, the longest running TV program is Meet the Press. This month, they're celebrating 70 years on television. And the current host, moderator, is Chuck Todd. Now, this is a very liberal man. NBC is liberal, very leftist now, propaganda, MSNBC too. And you know what? Chuck Todd said the following, and I wrote it down as fast as I could. He said, an NBC poll has just been finished, and there's scary news for Democrats. He said, Americans have, listen to this, they've lost their uh, confidence in President Biden. 
He said just 22% believe that we are headed in the right direction. 71%, and he said this is really, he said, stunning news. 71% say we are on the wrong track. And this comes from really a near majority of Democrats as well. A majority say he doesn't have the ability to what? to handle a crisis. 54% now disapprove of him. He's plummeting. And they say the Republicans have double-digit leads in dealing with what? Border security, inflation, crime, national security, the economy, uh, and just getting things done. So we're at a very pivotal time and things are changing and turning. Now, you say, are there options? Well, I think there's three options for this man. Well, the first one is what? Well, the first one is he can resign. I think things are only going to get worse, and I'm not even touching upon about 20 other areas where we see disintegration and really devastation in this country. He could resign, just like Richard Nixon did. Uh, Gorbachev resigned, Pope Benedict resigned, Sarah Palin resigned, uh, 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 Tony Blair resigned, and he could do it with dignity and just say, I just need to resign. Or this man could be removed. You say, how does that take place? Well, in the Constitution, the 25th Amendment is there. And when somebody reaches a place where they're incapable, they're inept, they're incapacitated, as I believe Mr. Biden is, it was just like in, what was it, 1919, Woodrow Wilson. He had a major stroke. Now, it was in the latter part of his um, time in office, but the, the, he was shielded. His wife was basically running the country. But if it had been at the beginning, they would have removed him because he couldn't carry on after this major stroke. Now, there's a third option, and that is this, and that is there can be a replacement through what? Impeachment. Individuals have been impeached. They did sham and bogus impeachment proceedings with Donald Trump, but Bill Clinton, because of his lying, he was impeached. And we have in history, what else? Andrew uh, Johnson. This is a man that uh, was from Tennessee, but he came into office when Lincoln was assassinated. And as a result of that, what, what did they have to do? They said, this man is inept, and this man is contentious, argumentative, obstinate. And so the House voted to impeach him, and he basically made it because only one vote short in the Senate, he would have been impeached. I think we're facing something like that as a viable option. Now, you might say, why, why, why? Why is this important? Well, there's so many reasons, but I would offer a bunch. When I look at Mr. Biden, I would say this. First of all, I believe he is violating the Constitution. He put his hand on the Bible when he was inaugurated, and he said, I swear to uh, uphold by my oath of office uh, the Constitution of the United States to the best of my ability, so help me God. But he has violated that in many ways, but a big one is in immigration. If you study our Constitution, we have laws, we have uh, statutes, and they've been uh, uh, established in the past. Why? So that there is order. We welcome immigrants, a million a year. But you know what's happened is Mr. Biden came in and he basically said, throw out the window everything that Mr. Trump did to bring order. And by the way, Mr. Obama, when he was in office, deported more people than anybody. So there was a lot of shenanigans and evil things said about Mr. Trump and that. But Mr. Biden has now brought on a humanitarian crisis. We have over two million people coming into this country. He told them, you know, take him in as asylum seekers. Asylum seekers, the definition of that is people whose lives are being threatened, not just people that want a better economic condition. And so he said, yeah, and you get free medical care. So things are out of control. It's chaotic. And it's a serious crisis right now. And he has not upheld the Constitution. And this is serious. This is very serious. I would say to you right now, when I look at the Constitution and you look at what's there in terms of uh, precepts and and ordinances and uh, statutes, uh, we have exclusionary uh, uh, measures there. You can't come in if you're just a criminal or let's say you're a communist, a terrorist that is bent on destruction and overthrowing the United States government, or if you have communicable diseases, there are restrictions. But all of these things are thrown up in the air and Mr. Biden just says, says, come and you'll be entitled. That's one reason. He has not upheld the Constitution and that is lawlessness. Another thing that's very serious and that is this, I believe he has a contempt for taxpayers. That's you and me. We work hard for our money, but he uses 
all the opportunities for what? Giveaways with no work requirements. He's offering all these entitlements to get people to vote Democrat and it's giveaways. There's no such thing as free money, but he's even offering now, I don't know if you've been aware of this, the Biden administration working and the ACLU is right alongside and they're saying, let's give everyone that came a child and a parent Asylum, you know, they've come illegally. This is criminal activity. Give them each one $450,000. Yeah, give the parents four fifty. dollars give a child because, you know, trauma and, and, and heat exhaustion and they, there wasn't proper medical care. They were separated from their parents. All of these things are raised. And so now a billion dollars, Mr. Biden, they're discussing, uh, set it aside in payments, settlements to give to people that came here illegally. That's, I say this, that's contempt for voters. I work hard for money. I've saved my money. And this whole idea now of just free money and giveaways and wealth redistribution here and confiscation of wealth and equity and all of these things they're doing and he's pushing is really an insult to our intelligence and to those of us that work hard and save and we pay our taxes. Lastly, I would say he's a man that shouldn't be receiving communion. He says, I'm a professing Catholic. He just met with the Pope and the Pope has, Pope has caved because why? Because of the moral authority that the Catholic Church has lost over scandals. And so the Pope says, yeah, he can receive communion. That's contrary to the dogma of the church that says life begins at conception and we protect human life. So these are just some of the reasons, but I'll tell you, I believe Mr. Biden is very much involved with manipulation, misleading, misrepresenting, and he's very much like Simon was, who was self-exalting himself. There was another one, and I close with this, in Acts chapter 12 named Herod. He was another one that wanted power, and he loved it when he sat down in his robes and, and he began to speak, and what did the people say? Oh, the voice of God! He was struck down immediately. I pray for Mr. Biden. But I pray for this country. And when individuals like him are inept, incapacitated, and are not doing what's right for the good of this country, then I say it's time. God, raise up the righteous and remove the ungodly.